Welcome back, everyone, to Natalie is a Dawn. Our main your host, Dominic, or Shadow, if you're in. We have another match between Sparkles and Bumcrumbs on Obsidian. Again, another replay, though, with much more recent one than the last one. And let's get started. We have Sparkles going for the Shieldbot Factory and Bumcrumbs going for the Cloakybot Factory on Obsidian. Pretty good choice, actually. This map is one of those weird ones where you often get things like gunship starts because the way it's built, you have this, you have this valley that most of the game plays within. But the thing is, it's bot-pathable, so it's not like you can't just go for shield bots. Anyway, Bumcrumb's also going for a much more defensible opening position, while Sparkle's going for the very forward position that, again, I kind of recommend, though I feel like in this map it's not as big of a deal. Like, in the previous map in Wanderlust, it was more pressing because of the way that it was constructed. In this one, because it's a corner already, like, it's not a, if it's a side start, I would recommend always the middle. In a corner start, it's... Going forward isn't a bad idea, but I can kind of see where the problem is, especially since you can have units just sneak around and get to the back. Or in this case, sneak around and get to the back. So the back is actually not that easy to defend. Since, like I said, these mountains do not block unit movement. And it's not that far away to get to these forward expansions, so it's not like you're losing that much defender's advantage. That's more what it comes down to. At any rate, Bomb is going for a very quick expansion over into one of the little valley's right off to the side of their base, while at the same time, Sparkles, again, they're going farther back. They went forward and then building back afterwards. So Bumcrum's being a little bit sneaky, actually. I mean, this will get spotted because the bandits come around the side and it'll maybe get rid of the Conjurer. It's probably going to get rid of the Conjurer, unless Bumcrum's is paying attention to this, which they might be. No, not in time! Nope, that Conjurer is done. The bandit is going to try and the Glaze is going to help as best it can. But that Conjurer, unless it jukes right now... Like, move north! Move north! Ah! Not enough. Not quickly enough, unfortunately. Bumcrumb's losing that very early on, which is a huge win for Sparkles. The only thing, Bumcrumb's right now, they do have a fairly strong opening economy. Not using it, mind you. But they do have a fairly strong opening economy compared to Sparkles. And that's... No, seriously. Start using it. What the heck? Let's get going. Okay, that's obviously a bit of a problem that they aren't using it, but still... At the very least, they didn't lose too much from losing the Conjurer, but they still lost a lot. Like, by now, if they hadn't lost the Conjurer, they would have at least been able to hold up here. A couple Glaives come in, it would have been a bit faster to rebuild. But if but the Bandit wasn't destroyed, so it's not like the Conjurer would have been able to build up Metal Extractors and get Bum Crumbs another two or three, or four to six Metal per second ahead. Still, though, Bum Crumbs does have that slight advantage, does have the front side pretty well defended, at least from the early rating that's likely to happen. As it is right now happening, we have Sparkles coming in with a couple of bandits over into the center of the map, but that's not going to accomplish much. The Reaver's already there. The main concern, of course, is what Sparkles doing afterward. They're switching over a little bit to Outlaws, upgrading the commander a bit, and more importantly, building out forward. Taking a gradually increased economic advantage. While at the same time also warning any potential bandits that this is not a place to come into. Still, though, Sparkle, like I said, they are managing to maintain and increase their advantage. I mean, they have a couple extra metal extractors on Bum Crumbs. Bum Crumbs building off to the side again, being very sneaky. I mean, something you kind of want to do with Cloaky, or at least it makes sense to do with Cloaky. But still, that's. That is kind of hard to pull off in this map when you're dealing with. Well, okay, you're dealing with shield bots, sort of. I guess it's not as big of a deal. But it's still a little bit, it's still a little bit hold, hard to pull off when you haven't taken any of the stuff in between. Like, Sparkles is right at Bomb Crumbs' doorstep. If they realize, hey, maybe there's something over here, or if the commander happened to have a radar on them, then they'd know. Oops. And they don't. But if they did, I mean, very well could be. Radar is... No, they do have radar on them. What am I saying? That's exactly what they have, actually. Just kind of gotten lucky for Sparkles, sorry, for Bumcrumbs, rather, that Sparkles' commander hasn't gone forward enough to actually see this expansion over here. And I think, yeah, the terrain's still been blocking it. So, it's not seen yet, but it will soon. So that's the thing, is that Sparkles, right now, they're like just one small step from their commander away from spotting this entire side expansion that Bumcrumbs is trying to be sneaky about. And at the same time, Bumcrumbs never managed to take the expansion that's much easier to hide that the bandit already came in from Sparkles right at the start of the match. So, at this point, there's not really a whole lot that Sparkles has going against them. 
Like, Bumcrum's main plan is obviously go for overdrive. Get the fusion reactor up. Use that to really power up their metal extractors, which is nice. I mean, it's an extra 1.6 metal per second. It's not a terrible thing. It's actually getting them even with sparkles, despite the fact that their territory is way less well constructed. Like, they just don't have any metal extractors to work with. And again, Sparkles' commander just happens to have not seen this yet, in large part because of the terrain. Like, like I said, it's... The radar is there, it's just the terrain is kind of in the way, and I guess the range is a little bit short. But it is there. Just about. More importantly, though, it's just that Sparkles could attack it if they wanted to. If they just even wanted to check it out, send a couple bandits over here and see, did Bumcrumbs build anything over there? They'd know. But it may not even matter, this forward assault coming in... Looks like it's in a really good spot to actually take everything apart. I mean, the Reaver's not going to have a chance. The Stinger might not even be able to be built up before everything comes in. Although, to be fair, the Bandits are taking a lot of damage, so maybe it's not so bad. Now, with the Ronin already set up, actually, there is, there is a possibility of defense, but it's more like there's a possibility of defense once. What's going to happen when Sparkles brings in a follow-up force, which they are currently building? Like, they aren't... This isn't going to be the one thing they attack with. Although, if their commander goes down, Sparkles will have a bit of a harder time actually pushing that again. However, right now, Bumcrumbs primarily has forces that are designed to counter the Raiders. They don't have forces designed to counter Skirmishers. Might go for it, but it looks like the Tank Foundry is going to be more directly used. I'm not sure if they're going for just an attempted at Cyclops spam, or if they're going to be going for something more like Kodachi Blitz, just to try to get in on speed. Franklin, surprised they are just building a couple of glaives. I, they have none. They have Ronin Reavers and and Knights, but no Glaives, which would do a really good job getting rid of all these rogues. Like, just run in there and rip them to shreds. Sparkles is not using any real anti-raider... No, they're using rocket launchers. They're also vulnerable. Sparkles' commander will be completely torn to shreds by a bunch of Glaives. Oh, also, by the way, this is actually the second game of the stream. There'll be a third game afterwards. I started late. So I'll end late. So yeah, this is game two. It'll be a third game afterwards, and then probably call it, but we'll see. I mean, yeah, I usually do three games in these streams, and this is game two, not game three. Anyway, back to the game, though. We do have... Oh, Bumcrumbs, I wish you'd just send a worker over in the west side of the map. You've got a gla you got a Reaver there. You could easily hold it. I mean, it's clear that all the forces are up front, but no, going for pillagers instead. Okay, this... Uh, or emissaries, rather, turning into an artillery war. I don't agree. I'm okay. I kind of agree right now since there's a bunch of thugs and outlaws over in the front of the map. I guess it does make sense. But I don't totally agree. Nice raid, though. Getting Glaives over to the western side of the map, getting rid of one of Sparkles' attempts at expansion. Might be a hint to Sparkles that Bum Crumbs was expanding in the exact same way. Hard to be sure. I mean, if nothing, Sparkles probably has realized, hey, wait a sec, stuff's built up over here! And indeed they have! Going over to the eastern side of the map, Sparkles is gonna double check, wait, has Bumcrumbs built something over here? Because yeah, they have, or it looks like they're double checking, it's actually a little hard to tell. But even then, I mean, Sparkles is just... They have such a strong army up front, the only downside is that there is a strong defense countering it, and... A lot of all these Ronin are the exact counter for Thug Outlaw. Like, that's what you want to use to deal with Thug Outlaw. Not to mention Bumcrumb stopping Sparkles from building up. The only downside is that, again, Sparkles has their commander there. They have a bunch of units that didn't die from last time. Bumcrumbs does have a reasonable defense, and actually is doing a pre pretty good job defending. But, again, they spent 800 metal on that factory. They did not spend that money on units. So Sparkles still has a bit of an advantage in terms of the actual units being built. The only disadvantage, of course, is that... They don't have any shields effectively, and the rogues are getting torn apart by the, by the emissaries, so the emissaries actually ended up being a good choice. I still think Glaze would have been a more efficient choice, but the emissaries have worked to get rid of the rogues. And now Sparkle's commander, all on their own, surrounded by skirmishers and assault units and emissaries. This commander is pretty much dead, and I think with that, Bumcrumbs might actually be able to turn this around. Especially if they can get the reclaim off the commander, because as it is, this commander, 4,000 metal worth of commander, going down once... There we go, that last lightning shot takes it out. And Sparkles, on the other hand, they do have a lot of money. Turning into a lot of bandits, gonna be coming into some conflict with a couple of Reavers, and having a hard time making that really work. 
And by really work, I mean they're gonna die. Like, pff, terribly. They're, they're, they're done. Get two or three more Reavers out there, and Bum Crumbs will be able to hold this off forever. The only downside for Bum Crumbs is they did lose a couple of their Metal Extractors, and they did lose a decent chunk of their army, but they are reclaiming it back, so that's fine. Actually, what's there for reclaim? A oh, thousand metal worth. Not a bad number. The commander itself is another 1,200, but that's not as easily in range. Still, though, get a couple of conjurers out there, and bum crumbs will be way ahead. And they have 40 build power in their main base they can easily use. 45 that they want to put in the conjurer. So reclaim should be no problem. They can easily turn that reclaim into just more units. So that's great. They're in actually... Bum crumbs is in a great position right now. It's a little bit questionable because they aren't quite in the perfect position. Like they're still under some siege. But if they get rid of the couple caretakers, they'll be they'll be done. It'll be entirely theirs. Unfortunately, losing the eastern side of the map, but again, they have a massive reclaim field to work with to rebuild. They still have the metal extractors over here that they could rebuild and really should at some point, but the reclaim is the priority. That's much faster to get. Much easier to hold on to. And setting up the Cyclops as another push tool. I mean, the thing is, Bum Crumbs right now has the army advantage. They had a very efficient set of attrition there. I mean, great use of, of emissaries. I wasn't confident in that. But I can kind of see the argument compared to Glaives. Because Glaives, yes, they would have gotten rid of the rogues. And at the time, it would have been a slightly better idea. But pushing in afterwards, Glaives would have fallen short. Because they would have run into Sardos. They would have run into... Well, I guess Harpies that they have been built. They would have run into more defenses. It would have been a lot harder to actually push with that. Emissaries, on the other hand, they can just keep pushing. As long as there's something in front to stop the counterforce from coming in there, they can just go. So that's actually a really good idea. I mean, the Nimbuses are going to be a bit of a problem. I do expect a couple Gremlins to be built up fairly shortly. And yeah, that's exactly what's happening. Gremlins are being built up. But more importantly, the Cyclops is up. And like I said, the forces... Oh, never mind. The Emissaries forced to retreat... So some damage has been dealt, some revenge has been had by Sparkles, and Bum Crumbs is still behind in terms of actual captured territory. Like they only have six metal extractors, or five metal extractors, the six is under construction right now. They're mainly flying on reclaim, and I don't think Bum Crumbs has queued up reclaim for this section here with the commander, which I kind of wish they would, because that is another thousand metal reclaim. That's, that's pretty necessary right now. But I guess I can understand. They do want to get units to get rid of all the forces coming in, get rid of the Nimbus. I mean, they should be able to at least get rid of the Nimbus and the Locust. Rogues won't be a problem. Cyclops and Emissaries will deal with that. So right now, Bum Crumbs is still in a pretty solid spot as far as being set up goes. They just want to make sure that they can deal with another attack from Sparkles next time it happens, which it inevitably will. Of course, the other downside is that Sparkles can still figure out what's going on. Like, they got locusts around here. There is a Reaver that'll stop it, but the Reaver's out of position to do so. And it's not moving in position. I don't know if Bum Crumbs has paid attention to that. I mean, they've seen it. They just don't have the Reaver going over to get rid of the locusts, because Reavers do counter locusts. Pretty hard, actually. Reavers and Stardusts get rid of locusts. Locusts fly too low to the ground to be able to avoid their gunfire, and because it's this rapid-fire machine gun that spreads around, it's effectively a flak cannon. So yeah, the Locust is going to die now, but it got rid of the Conjurer. It's won. It did its job. Yeah, it sure it dies to the war or to the Reaver without really any fight, but it got rid of the Conjurer. You go... I always say, get rid of the Builder. It slows everything down for your opponent. So now Bum Crumbs is behind by 20 metal per second. They have a reasonably large army and have been quite efficient for, for everything. They're quite efficient for attrition, quite efficient for, I guess, the use of overdrive, use of space. It's just that, ultimately, you need that metal. Doesn't matter how efficient you are, if you don't have the metal for it, it really doesn't matter. And at this point, that's what we're seeing. We're seeing all this stuff just not matter. I mean, the Cyclops able to at least get rid of a few units here and there. Maybe, I mean, gets the shields no problem, just because it out damages the shields completely. So, good. That's good for it. But there's not enough anti-air. There's not enough units in general. Bum Crumbs is wise to retreat here, but it's not going to accomplish much. Unless they build up enough anti-air. Like, seriously, you got tanks. Build up an Etten. Build up two Ettens. Or maybe just one Etten, because they haven't gone that hard in terms of air. But yeah, build up an Etten. 
that'll take care of basically everything. Not a huge investment compared to what's already been done. So do that. Make sure to rebuild more metal extractors, which is the biggest problem here. Get this commander reclaim, which another fairly major problem here. And you should have a good shot. But yeah, that's sort of the main problem, is not enough anti here right now, and the Cyclopses, while they're good, it's just Sparkles has already built the counter, essentially. A bunch of light units. Stuff they can't easily deal with. Stuff they've had that their slow attack doesn't actually let them efficiently manage. So at this point, Bump Crumbs, I really recommend, like, go for a Netten, get an Netten, get a Kodachi, just get some stuff for light units, or just get an Netten and get a couple more warriors, even. You don't even need a Kodachi. I mean, the emissaries will get rid of the rogues, so you just all you really need to do is get rid of any air units that come in, and you're, just, you're set. The Cyclops is get rid of the thugs. Like, you have units that answer everything your opponent's doing. Just a matter of placing them in the right spot and getting an Eden. And there we go! There's the Eden! Awesome! So we have an Eden! The air should not be a problem. And also, nice little harassment here from the Glaives. Getting rid of a conjure should be able to get rid of the picket as well. Go for that picket next, or immediately, or or don't and die. Wait, how did that glaive die? The picket hadn't reloaded. Huh, weird. Anyway, maybe I just reloaded one of the missiles. At any rate, that's the harassment gone. And on the other hand, harassment going in the north side. Bandits having a bit of trouble with the reaver, but that's enough. It's just they came one at a time. That's the only reason the reaver survived. If those bandits came in in one big group, that reaver would be dead. But overall, yeah, bandits around the side. There's no defenses here. Or actually, no, there are. There's one Lotus. There's one Lotus that sh that'll be fine, but again, it's just Bum Crumb's getting hit on all sides, not really finding any easy ways of getting the damage in that they need. So, right now, it's really just coming down to the fact that Bum Crumb's has never really been building up their economy. They keep not putting units over here to take metal extractors over to the northwest, over in the Silver Ravine. I get it's kind of harder to them, but I think they're just not thinking about it. I think they're mostly focused on making sure that they get this this army gotten rid of. And that's that's all well and good. It's just not enough. Like, it really isn't going to help if they don't get rid of... If they get rid of the army, it's not going to help if they don't get rid of the forces or the economy that actually allows that army to keep rebuilding itself. That's where the problem's coming in. I mean, thankfully for... Thankfully for the Bum Crumbs, their Eden is there. Their Eden has not hit, been hit by the Racketeer, so it's able to actually do stuff. But even then, it's still only able to do so much. But it's done enough. It actually has done its job. The Cyclops able to get in as well, doing its job. Mostly the problem being the Racketeers, which, again, this is where I would recommend, you know, get a few Glaives or something. Okay, that is way too many yet. That is far too much anti-air. I mean, there's a Nimbus here. We only just needed the one Etten. You don't, didn't need an army of them. That, I think, is a mistake. Bum Crumbs would really switch off the Etten to either Kodachi production or another Cyclops. Or possibly Ogres. Like, not Ettens. You don't need that many Ettens. The, the anti-air is excessive. This is actually going to be what gives Sparkles the game, if anything. Like, Bum Crumbs burning their limited economy on units that are not going to be useful against what's actually available, what's actually going to be attacking them. And I get the reason to fear, but Ettens are really efficient anti-air units. Like, really, you just needed the one to get rid of everything that was there. The Nimbus can't even get... With what's been destroyed, the Nimbus can't even get in. They're not far, anyways. Retreats have been forced thanks to the Racketeers more than anything. And that's the thing. Not much has been done to deal with the Racketeers. Which... You know, get a bunch of lighter units. Glaives, Kodachis, whatever. Just stuff that can get through. Or get more Pillagers. Oh, sorry, Emissaries. The Emissary's been doing a great job for Bum Crumbs. That's one of the big reasons that their, their attrition has been so efficient. They've had the Emissary's been able to take out all these forces from afar, or at least weaken their shields so they don't really matter and the felons can't do much. That's been amazingly efficient. So yeah, get more of those. And they are switching off to Cyclops, which is good. That's... That'll help. I still think Emissary's would be a bit more useful in this context, but... Yeah. The Cyclops are doing their job. Because you already have two. That's quite a lot. Especially when you have a bunch of Ronin dealing with shields and just helping support the whole defense effort. Again, the main issue to me is that Bum Crumb simply cannot expand. They've been pretty much contained in their base this entire game. They haven't really had a whole lot of money, even with the overdrive, 
to allow them to actually do stuff with. And they haven't taken the expansion opportunities they've had. Like, this, the Northwest is done. Sparkles has it. But it, there's been a lot of game where Bum Crumbs could have taken it. And didn't. And they are going for it now. But it just feels too little too late. Like, they should have gone for it 10 minutes ago. Like, they went for it in the beginning of the game. They should have kept going for it. They should have just kept pushing that one. And once the bandits were gone, you know, you put a Reaver there and you're fine. You don't need to worry about it until later in the game. And at that point, well... Hopefully you have a large enough army anyway from the fact that your economy is not that much smaller than your opponents, if slightly bigger than your opponents. Because, I mean, Bump Crumbs had a slight economic advantage from the start of the game. They just didn't really manage to main turn it into anything. But again, though, the main, the main strength they've had here is the fact that they've been very efficient for attrition. The only downside, of course, being that they've also been relying on a very specific set of units. And if any of the units die, for instance, they have no Reavers right now, they can't get rid of the Bandits. And the Rettons are out of position now, so they can't easily get rid of these Nimbuses. So that is, again, kind of the downside. I'm not sure why they don't have Reavers, actually. Like, seriously, where are the Reavers? There should be more Reavers. I must not be thinking about it. Or must be thinking, oh, there's not enough Bandits to justify the Reavers. And maybe. I don't think having one or two Reavers is a good idea regardless. Just in case Raiders come. And also because if you, your opponents get close, they deal a lot of damage. It's worth having. Sparkles of Siege right now, though, they've managed to take out all the extractors that Bum Crumbs have taken. Bum Crumbs, I don't see how they're going to manage to get out of this. I mean, they've got the Ronin trying to help harass, but again, how are you going to get rid of all these Nemesis? You have the Etans, you have the Gremlins, which is good. You have forces to deal with that stuff, but they're out of position or dead. Mostly just out of position trying to repair. Because again, we saw a bunch of them being built early on, and I criticized that, and I criticized that because at the time it didn't make sense. Now it kind of does, but they were lost at the time, so it didn't help anyway. So with that, looks like Sparkles finally managed to overwhelm Bum Crumbs. I mean, Valiant defense from Bum Crumbs, but the problem is that they never really translated that into a strong economy. But they could have at, many, at many points in the game, it just wasn't the focus. And if they had gone two or three conjurers and just focused on building out as they got rid of that first siege, that they got rid of the commander. If, when they killed Sparkles' commander, that was a golden opportunity to start really expanding, especially when they were stopping Sparkles from expanding over to the western side of the map. If Bum Crumbs expanded over there themselves, they would have been way ahead in economy, and Sparkles would not have been able to build up this large army. And with the way that Bum Crumbs was building forces, like the unit choice they made, that would have taken the game for them. Like, if they, were, if they were at even economy, their attrition would have been so much more efficient. That would have given them the match. But yeah, it really just came down in their case to not having enough units. Not having enough money. Not being able to rebuild their armies whenever stuff died. Even though they have been quite efficient about not losing units, they still were losing units. So, yeah. And I think... Okay, Sparkles, I think the thing to bear in mind is that Bum Crumbs pays attention to the meta. Like, consider that Bum Crumbs... I don't think Sparkles is watching right now, but if they are, or if they end up watching this on YouTube, Bum Crumbs has requested a lot of replays from me. He's probably... or they've probably watched a lot of my stuff. Like, they're probably people who have a massive interest in learning the game and learning the meta. So, watching tournaments, watching exhibition match replays, watching what high-level players do, and then following that. Considering, like I said, that they've been requesting a lot of replays from me recently, I expect they've been watching a lot of this stuff, and so they know what the meta is because they've seen what the meta is. And they are playing it well. Like, the use of emissaries and the use of con con Cyclops is largely the meta right now, but also it's just really there. Like, they're, they're also just really paying attention to what the units can do, what the different properties are. The only downside, again, which is why I'd say how are you thinking they're a smurf right now, Sparkles, is that Bum Crumbs is not expanding much, which is a common thing that newer or rusty players do. Like, if someone's not played for a while, it's easy to stop doing that. If someone's newer to the game, it's easy to forget that you need to be constantly expanding. Hell, I do that sometimes. If I'm playing, like, it's easy to get really focused on the combat and forget, oh yeah, maybe I should be building more units or building more building more metal extractors, getting more caretakers. Although, Bum Crumbs is doing pretty good for that. They never really accessed. But yeah, that was the thing. Sparkles just... No, it's... Bum Crumbs is a newer player. They're just really keen. They've done their homework. 
that's all it comes down to. Oh, be, okay, Sparkles is a Steam release player who's top 20. Well, fair enough. I mean, not saying Sparkles is bad. Again, Sparkles did a really good job expanding. They did a really good job pushing all their forces around the map, but they were not especially efficient when it came to unit usage. That was the thing that kept bump crumbs in the game, is just really strong attrition. I think that's a thing... I had to double check if that's a thing bump crumbs is generally good at, but it does seem like something bump crumbs focuses on is preserving their units as well as possible and making the most of unit type counters. Because that's something that's important in this game, and that's something bump crumbs does. Like I said, it's the reason they managed to survive as long as they did, considering that they were way behind in terms of economy for the vast majority of the game. I mean, look, metal income, that was about even for half the game, and then sparkles went off. Metal usage, same thing. Army value, though, Bum Crumbs was way ahead until the very end by cost, and was doing a great job keeping Sparkles' army down. And that was entirely because they were highly efficient. Like, constantly about 5,000 metal more efficient than their opponents. Well, 5 to 10,000 overall. So that's huge. The only thing that Bum Crumbs didn't really have was enough, un enough metal to build enough of an army to push back. So they didn't have enough metal to win, they just had enough metal to not lose for a while. Anyway, that was that. And a pretty interesting match at that. The next match, probably the last one for tonight, is going to be a match between FFC and Dark's Thigh. Darkest Tie. Oh, because they're Tie. Darkest Tie on Adansonia. Oh, Calm Morph Effect? Okay, that's per fair point. Sparkles did have their commander up to about 4,000 metal before it died. And at that point... Okay, yeah, so... See, where this... This section here... Actually, how am I zooming in? This section here of the graph where there is a bit of a drop, that's the same point where the commander died. So it's a little hard to show because Army Value and Other Value don't have a merged graph. Or, wait. They do! Oh yeah, there we go, there we go. So total value. This is commander plus army plus defense. And you can see here, Sparkles had their commander, had a slight advantage on Bump Crumbs, and then when the commander was lost, Bump Crumbs had and maintained an army advantage up until the end. This last bit is mostly defense, which, as we can see, was not in the front line, so it didn't really matter all that much. But, yeah, after that point, army after this drop, army value is the only thing that really matters. And Bum Crumb stayed way ahead in the entire period. So yeah, Karm Morph was part of it. And then it stopped being part of it for about three quarters of the game. Or two thirds of the game. But yeah, anyway. So next I'm going to be FFC versus Darkest Thigh. And then, or Darkest Thigh. And then I'm going to be calling it. Probably doing the recording for answering the 1,000 subscribers Q&A questions. If you still have questions, the video is still up. So you can go and post questions for the next hour or so. I might do it later in the day, depending on what happens for my own schedule, but probably will do it pretty soon after the stream. Anyway. So yeah, next match, FFC, Darkest Eye on Adansonia. That should be pretty good. Again, another replay request, because I believe it was FFC in this case. We really wanted to see this casted. So hopefully that means it's a good match. So stay tuned.